Hey everybody, we're back with a cool weekly. Cool weekly incoming. Um, I buy you. I don't, uh, not buy you. <laughs> and then I take a seahorse, which you might find in a bayou, maybe? I don't know, maybe just the ocean. Um, we'll be a tiny fish, which is kind of what a seahorse is to begin with. I know, like, you, because it's the sea, you would think that they only show up in the sea, but I don't think that's true. Because, um, you know, there's river otters, but I see them in the aquarium. The aquarium's not a river. So uh, check yourself lest you wreck yourself, is, is what I've always said. Now, we don't need to get the level yet. Even if we lose this round, we got two levels coming. That's good chances for dog, possible elephant blowfish setups, possible early giraffe scaling probably a seahorse or, or a mosquito. Mosquito does override equipment, but I think I, in, in the battle of overriding equipment, I'd much rather have a bat, although a mosquito already being level two in advance. It's quite helpful. There's a bat, by the way. Um, start me here. That's uh, horrendous. I just wanted to make some space. We got to buy two things. That's a big buy. And uh, I think you just buy a bat and you say, honestly, you say thanks for the memories. I'd love to get a croissant next. And there it is. I don't think anybody's leveling up anytime soon. So the jellyfish really has no play. We croissant a seahorse so that it can scale even faster. And maybe it becomes a garlic target soon after. Or maybe not. I don't know. I, I don't have an answer for you yet. What I do know is that this team right now is pretty good. Chinchilla's in the flex position. It's, it's ready to be offloaded. It's ready to be sent down to the AHL. Don't care about two yaks. We care about... A I hate to say it. We care a little bit about team efficiency right now. Not interested. I'm genuinely not interested. I'm upset. I'm genuinely upset. I'm genuinely selling double here in order to get one of these and maybe talking about putting bone on giraffe briefly so that the giraffe can be a little bit more effective that was a little a little pivot from us but it would if we get a level two bat next turn i would say it's all worth it okay big weakness i don't think it's gonna matter but i appreciate the attempt we got real close man we we're one attack for negative one damage away from drawing no bad Okay, you take one of these. I'm not a turtle believer yet. A mosquito and a seahorse. Seahorse, most likely to uh, continue to level. Mosquito, soon to be sold in all likelihood. Roll me for better units. Better units. I rethink, I, I regret nothing, I rethink nothing. I would sell you. The mosquito, like it, it has entered a strange part of the game where it's useless. At the start of the game, it's useful for, for favorable trades. At the end of the game, it breaks equipment. If we're not scaling it, I'm not using it, okay? Overwrite that meat. Over, you didn't overwrite the meat, though. You didn't overwrite the meat. That poses a great existential threat to me. I'm going to need you to overwrite that meat next time, okay? What's our HP? Four? Could be worse. I'm going to need you to take a meat bone. Stats are king. Never forget that. Stats are king. Roll once. Take a rabbit. Freeze a garlic. I think it's it's highly possible that the croissant era of seahorses come to an end. And it's we're now in the we've got to win now. Put garlic on your best unit and pray stage of the game. You got to overwrite that garlic, please. It's the whole, the whole reason you're here, honestly, is to overwrite that garlic. I don't want to offend you. You bring a lot to the organization, Bat. But the whole reason you're here is to overwrite equipment. If you can't do that, we're, we have to have a conversation, okay? So you need this. We also get a, a very decent buff from the salad because we have a rabbit. And I think that maybe it didn't go to the units that I would have chosen. But every unit has its as uh, it, it needs HP right now. Because we can't lose. We can't afford to lose a single game. We should win this. Especially if, if for the first time in, in history we could overwrite a piece of equipment, we would definitely win, but... Okay, now, does the rabbit have a long-term future? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't even know why I'm buying a seahorse. I feel semi-confident. I'm throwing a rabbit on top rather than buying cookies. Hold on. 
Thought there was a shadow around the door. I was worried we were getting porch burgled. We we're gonna lose our Cascade dishwasher pods again. Hit the llama? Didn't hit the llama, huh? So the thing is, next time, next time, there's not gonna be a next time. I'm a, can I? I don't think this team is that bad. I would like to have someone run like a statistical analysis and, and see if that was the worst bat of all time. I know that you always are probably going to underrate your bat. You're always going to be like, it didn't hit exactly the right thing. You always notice that. And when it does hit the right thing, you go, of course it hit the right thing. That's its job. But I genuinely think we had like, we had a bat for five rounds. And I don't think one time it hit the thing that I needed it to hit. I'm just, I'm not upset. I'm just trying to not let that have an impact on my opinion of the bat. Because I think it would be very easy to look at that and go, oh, well, let's just never take a bat again because it's useless. I think that would be that would be the wrong piece of information to pull from that. I think we made decent decisions and the variance slightly, not horribly, but slightly put out a hit on us. We win this one for sure. Just great stats on the team, quite frankly. We're going to level up the cockroach. I would love to see a scaler. Blowfish is kind of like, when you get it, you're like, I kind of got to give it a chance. I'm going to level with you. I think you kind of got to give a bat a chance. I think it's that good. <laughs> Maybe now I'm overriding the bat. And we'll run a blowfish right here. And meat is probably like worth freezing. Honestly, for three gold, we could buy meat for our cockroach and then just sell it when we're done with it. You don't want to overcommit to it, obviously, but... And th the bat actually hit the perfect unit. I'm not upset. Thank you, bat. You did, you did great work. I'll try to remember that, okay? We probably lose or draw if you don't hit that unit. So you're a, let's make you an 8-6. That can work for a while. I really... The only reason I'm doing this is because there's bisons in the pack. So this is a very expensive bison enabler, but you know what? If it works, we won't be sad. If it doesn't work, we'll probably be like, that was horrible. That was an extreme waste of our time. Okay, I can't help but feel like we might have rather had melon on the other unit there. Those aren't pillows. Whatever, that, it happens. That's life, man. Okay, I respect none of these units right now. Clownfish can, can go off in the right hands. Actually, you know what? I respect one of these units. We gotta get a level, though. It happened. We become modestly stronger. Doubling the clownfish is an interesting idea. Am I willing to get a bat out of here? Or a mosquito? The mosquito would get 4-4. Four, four. You know what? This is an interesting situation because this team is worse than our last team and yet we're doing better. It happens from time to time because life is not fair. Sometimes you end up going up against great uh, teams when your team is good. Sometimes you end up going up against horrible teams when your team is, is merely pretty bad. So we want this. We want this. Like this is... It's Clownfish City. <laughs> it's Clownfish City in here. We'll buy you next turn. You'll give yourself the stats and then we'll have a level two Clownfish that can fit another thing. And then also many units are one away and all we have to do is like, if we can just live like long enough for chocolate to show up, if we can just live... Oh, you piece of crap. If we can just live long enough for chocolate to show up, then there's something doing. This round didn't look great. For sure. Hey, what's it like to have a giraffe? I wouldn't know. Except for that last round where we had one. Okay. Level me. I mean, it would, be, it would be a small buff every turn. You're pretty close to doing something. What if you had double scalers? <laughs> what if, oh, but the bat's about to get a, a juicy 4-4 four, four buff. There's no chocolate available yet. We need stats. So you're given two stats. You're given two stats. You, and you know what's nice? You're guaranteed to not give stats to this guy. I'm actually willing. I'm normally fairly anti-husky in this game. But I feel like... Ah! 
Mm. It 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 so the way that the husky works. In case you've forgotten, it gives a buff, uh, but only to units with no held food. So you can understand my scream when I placed garlic reflexively on uh, on a clownfish here, presumably. Um, well, I'm not gonna build around the husky. I will take my clownfish level. Well, my level that is buffed by the clownfish. Let's freeze this. Get a seahorse closer for the next round. So right now, you're basically a horrible giraffe. It's quite interesting when you think about it. You're a terrible giraffe. We can't win this round. The team is built around a cockroach. Please overwrite something useful. I'm begging you. I'm begging you to just overwrite something that has some... We, we, we can't win, man. We can't, we can't win these! Okay, we, we played that wrong. There were a lot of mistakes in there. How about one of these? How about one of these? How about one of these? I hate to say it, man. Chinchilla is the way to go. Be a feeble godfather. Turns out my, my... My chinchilla builds always go off. See, why, why you got to sell in here? Why you got to sold chinchilla in there? That's what always trips me up. Did you sell it just for the, the extra reroll at tier one to try to get an extra level? Have I figured out the keys to the kingdom? Uh, fortunately, it is worth noting, you never have to sell a chinchilla uh, to get an extra reroll because chinchillas always show up in the shop. So instead of looking for another unit, you might as well just take chinchillas because chin chinchillas are the most... Uh, the most frequently appearing unit in video game history, which is why I've learned to stop fighting and just embrace their existence instead. Little case in point. As, as nice as it would be to get you to level three, we could also kickstart a dog so fast and not invest in you too much. Like we could sell. This dog is gonna go off, dude. Sell two chinchillas. Sell, sell, buy, sell. I mean, two stat points for one gold is, is pretty sick. I would still take a bet. You can be mad if you want. You, I think you go koala yak, man. I think, I think we got the ultimate scumbag set up here. We're overriding equipment. We got a dog. We got koala yak. Like, this is a disgusting team. Not even that good, but like, should be good in a few rounds. You're getting two attacks, zero defense per turn. So a tropical fish would, would hit the spot. No question there. And it should, in theory, this should only get better for us. But we got to prioritize the dog. Next cell is going to be the beetle for sure. Okay, and honestly, I don't know. I might even sell the bat. We could just buy it back later at the same level of efficiency. The extra stat points we get here would also be helpful to our yak. So there's something in me that likes this, and then you sell, and then it goes to the yak maybe. If it goes to the dog, that's probably even better. And you sell, and maybe it goes to the yak. It goes to the dog. Again, that's probably even better. But now we got this little dub koala situation going on here. Now what goes next? You could sell the shrimp to have the flex space, or you could combine the koalas. I suppose if, if you're really gonna press me, the dream would be if we could get... Thank God. The dream would be if we could get a koala from the shop early. Then we don't have to worry about it. But we're not doing any selling yet. I would say you go, because we again, much like the beetle, we can just replace you. If we get a chance. If we don't, then whatever. You just own that. Okay, now you're a 1-1 one, one buff, no questions asked. So there's actually like a part of me that thinks Giraffe. that's good enough. And then we still are just looking for that extra koala space. Now that was not as good for the dog, but maybe that's okay. We got a little dub scaling going on here. We're closing in on a level 2 yak. The koalas, they could fall off pretty quick anyway. We're beating a mantis out the box. That's that's very rare. I think we can look at this and say this is very bullish for our long-term chances. But we still need or our current-term chances at least, but we need a dog. We need the dog to level, preferably. 
No such luck here. Well, something's got to go. So I think at this point, we, we say, you know what? We got to get the dog back in the game. So how about something like this? At six, I would, I would roll. And honestly, I would do a buy to help our dog. And then I would do a sell. And then I would have a giraffe hitting our two relevant units, which also gives us a very convenient combine on the next turn if we need space for the dog to keep popping off. But at some point, presumably, we're gonna get a, a third giraffe or a third koala, and then we'll have permanent space open up. That will be much more advantageous for us. Now, I see you've got a very similar idea going on here. I'm sorry to inform you that I got my koala and my yak faster. That's not a skill difference, it just happens from time to time. Not a whole lot you can do about it. Another koala, okay, what a world. Now we get a tier five on level up. Husky could go off. Alligator? Honestly, I would add it. But first, just see what else we got available. I would roll once more. You're not giving me enough right now, I think. So I'll do a buy and a sell. And a maybe a freeze on the on the pair. We really want... I would love to get a lemon going on this yak, I think, pretty soon. It's basically equal status with our dog, but scaling faster due to our order. Snipe the horse. They sniped my crocodile. Seems like a fair trade. That's the power of garlic. I think you should not be afraid to sell a koala, but it has to be right. That looks like a horrendous turn. <laughs> I actually think it's really good. And if we make it through this one, we got chocolate coming up next. Makes it really easy to get to a level two giraffe. We could give up our koala or give up our uh, our crocodile, and I would not cry about it in the slightest. That, I mean, that was like a, that was a gimme right there. We I'm, we're lucky to have two great units and some units that we could get rid of and not really care about. I think now the husky. I don't think it works. Let's keep buffing you because you're getting the buffs naturally. No chocolate. I really want chocolate, man. I still really want it. Okay, not getting it, that hurts me. That hurts me a great deal. Why don't, why don't we give six stat points to the squad? It didn't hit the crocodile. I would consider that very positive for us. We still got great yak scaling. The dog is, is falling off a little bit, but a sniper tends to be pretty efficient on three gold. That's why I haven't replaced them yet. Definitely hate uh, some death touch, no doubt about that. But look at this. We eked out a win against a scaling bison team and a death touch llama. What are we on? We're on nine wins on round 10. That's positive. <laughs> Take it. Take it. You're going to have more HP than the dog soon. We don't, we don't need to stat swap. I think you keep the crocodile. I don't think you go... Like, the, the, the snipe from the crocodile means more than the extra stats from the koala. Like, like, one extra stat point going to you, I think. I actually think that maybe the play here is just a cookie. I don't think we need a level 3 koala except for badge-based purposes, but of, of, a perfect run beats badge-based purposes in my world. So we killed a hippo. That's very nice. I don't think we can beat this squad. I think they got us. Okay, now this is dangerous because we got to... I'm not, I'm not sweating it, but it's dangerous because we got to find a way to scale up a little faster. And that probably involves um, giving the dog a little bit more support. Who would have thought? Now we got to... Now that the flawless is gone, let's think about the long haul, okay? I would say that this is an easy buy sell at least. And then I would add a lionfish. I think it does more out of the box than a, than a Sabertooth would. A Sabertooth would, would swallow a buff that goes to a unit that's already equipped much better, even though the Sabertooth can definitely go off in the right hands. We're going to win anyway. Well, that was a, a quick turnaround from like misery to greatness. That, that was a, pretty much a, the run played itself, even though we did go against the final boss, Twinkle My Sprinkle. Okay, let's run it back. We got time for one more. Early buy. I love it. I don't love it that much, but I'm thinking a crocodile going or a, a cockroach going to three five to also create a two four three six might be better 
than just buying another unit I don't really like just to have it. Be a gushing crater. See, a gushing tugboat could work as well. I think I'm 50-50 on whether we lose or draw. Okay, well, not if we're going up against a two squad with just worse stats. But we did, we invested to win round one. We got nothing going for round two. That's nice. Sure. And then I'm kind of thinking maybe you just do the same thing. <laughs> we got a four, six, and two, two fours. And a one, four. It's a lot of HP. And HP is very annoying to deal with. In the early game, at least. We definitely win this. But we still, like, I'm glad we're at two wins. But we're playing a little bit behind the eight ball because we only have a four squad and we have no level. I definitely would say no chinchilla. Here's what I would say. I would say you can probably buy a croissant to help your ladybug scale. I would say you could buy one meat to help your ladybug scale and make your cockroach a little bit more relevant. Turns out the roll earlier might have been a little bit more viable. But you know what? I look at this squad and I say to myself that I'm not displeased. Maybe this is just the sort of team where we're like, the only thing that matters is winning early. And then, you know, give me a reason. Like, find, find something else for me to pay attention to and I'll pay attention to it. But for now, if you're not giving me any other roads to win, then we're going Ladybug food spam. Because that's where we are right now. Honestly, two hedgehogs could kind of go off here. Two hedgehogs could be really annoying. I don't want a level yet. I honestly want like this and this two hedgehogs. Nobody's got garlic or anything. Why don't you just take a cookie on this hedgehog so you live long enough to get an attack out there? You're also going to live. You're going to die. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe we, well, let's move you up a little bit then. I don't know. The margin of victory on this one is pretty narrow because our surviving units only have one HP each. But if our opponents have less than that amount of HP, then we win, which we just did. So um, probably find a way to get that HP cranked a little bit here, but good navigation so far. I'm going to say slightly too late for a... Uh, for the dog build here. I'm gonna take my ladybug level. Definitely seems like when you're doing well, scaling is the thing to do. Like we, we can afford to slow down the team to scale up faster. So let's take a dragonfly. I'm gonna pay three gold to look for a better unit. And then I'm immediately going to sell you. And the reason for that is I want, um, I want to make sure that the ladybug gets the buff. And then I think we buy a hippo. And I think we actually, like, sell hedgehog, freeze tropical fish, roll once. Look, I would roll two salads next round for sure. And maybe sell a hedgehog to make it happen. I think this squad is okay, though. The ladybug didn't get any food buffs. The hippo's getting some buffs. We can't really control the hippo getting a buff, but we know the ladybug's getting 1-1 one, one per turn. So I'm, I'm thrilled with that. I'm okay with this. I'm, it's a draw, and I'm fine with that. Because next round, we're going to buy some foods that should help our ladybug be better. Maybe we get lucky. They hit our hippo. We're feeling great. Again, you no longer need to be here. So let's. these will now go to units that can use them more, even if it doesn't hit the hippo. Okay, very nice. Very nice distribution there. And roll. Okay, I would freeze you as a just in case, but set it up like, well, we really want the hippo to scale faster, even if it's in a suboptimal position for a little bit here. Okay, scale the giraffe. Lots of stats coming out, though. Are you seeing the stats? Definitely, I think that, that some garlic would, would hit the spot, too. Oh, we're seeing the stats. I feel like if the hippo gets the right sort of order going here... It's got a it's got more than a chance. It's got a guarantee. Now we prioritize you. I don't think we worry about getting the tropical fish higher. There's better I'm sorry. There's better scaling uh units available later. And we're like by later I mean right now. <laughs> I'm okay with this. We pray for the buffs. 
It's not that bad. It's still okay. Garlic on the hippo next, even though lemon's coming out soon. The garlic could help us win a round. It also buffs the ladybug. It's all advantageous. Still loving life here. Not even worried about the dragonfly dying. It wasn't even supposed to be here anyway. Tilt or be tilted? Okay, tell me where you stand on that one as we get to six wins. Buff me. Roll me. Sell me, because you're... I don't want to say you're strictly better, but you're pretty close to being strictly better. Now, you don't need the... I, garlic is going to be more effective, I think, for us right now than the croissant, which means we can actually set this up. I, I, I think it's still pretty good. Hold on. We're, we're buffing. We're buffing. Ladybug's getting some juicy buffs, man. This looks beautiful. Obviously, we want a level 2 hippo. Obviously, we want lemon on our hippo. Obviously, we would love if our dragonfly could hit level two. Would we love to add a poodle? Just something to think about. We got a four, a one, a three, and a four. I think that, that seems acceptable to me that a hippo could work here. Or sorry, a, a, a poodle could work here. Sniper's like, it's not the worst idea. Holy bursh. Okay. Oh, we should have frozen a lemon too. I know it's, we would have frozen like the whole shop at that point, but who cares if you're freezing the whole shop if the shop is full of things that freaking own. But it's okay, because I think we're going to be fine for one. You snipe two units I'd consider useless. We, are, we should have basically no problem right now. The problem in the future is when people get awesome equipment. We have nothing to override it right now. We just have to kill them through it. Which... May work fine if we scale fast enough. And I definitely look at this, by the way, and I say to myself, a cat lets us scale so quickly. And I got to remember this tropical fish has no reason to be here anymore. <laughs> I don't know why I've got such a... Uh, I'm leaving such a light on for the tropical fish, but it, it really does have no reason to be here. But look at the power of the level 2 hippo, man. Holy cow. I would love to add a second cat to that tropical fish spot. Poodle. Let me see. 6, 4, 1, 3, 4. I think this is a beautiful sell and a beautiful buy. And one of these is nice. We'd love some actual scaling foods. I would accept my lot in life and save some scaling foods for next time, if possible. That's well worth it to me. Now, call me a hater if you must. I would sell the poodle we just bought to put a second cat out there to make our food that much better. That hurt. <laughs> the fact that we were, we're gonna draw the fact that we were like one attack away from getting the win there, I hope that doesn't come back to haunt us. But what can you do? That's, that's the game. We buy you. We buy you. Not sweating that. We definitely just buy you. It's a very nice buff. Definitely, yeah. Um, melon is, is a tough one. Lemon is like, when you have garlic and you get lemon, you're like, that's a gimme. But when you have... Lemon or garlic and you want to get melon. I, I don't know. I'm scared because I look at that and I say to myself, you know, don't get me wrong. There's positivity to be had there. Hold on. Wait, slow down a second. I'm losing. <laughs> How is this happening? I just worry like melon beats death touch, but lemon beats so many other things. I honestly think you actually are not doing enough for us anymore. And I, I know that's a, a staggering statement. I was happy to have you. But I think that this matters to me. This matters so much more. I would still roll for some distributed foods. I know we have a melon frozen. I, you got to make a decision at some point, I suppose. Why don't you take one of these then? I'm happy with the lemon on the hippo. Now, I don't know what we're going to do with the frozen chocolate. It's possible we'll have two empty spaces soon. Saved. We, we got saved by mathematics there, and I'm not afraid who knows it. You could go for a level 3 hippo. There's situations where that would make a difference. Oh, there we are at 10 wins. Okay, never mind. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Some good runs in there. And I'll see you next time. See ya.